Hello, my dear friends. Today I want to speak about the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. The members of the IDF, they are all tremendous tzaddikin. How do I know? Because Rav Chaim Shulevit said that any soldier that has given up his, I quoted this many times, any soldier has given up his life is like Haruge Lud. The Umar says that there was in the city of Lud, the Caesar's daughter was murdered. They made a blood libel. They blamed the Jews. The Caesar was going to murder all the Jews in the city. Pupus and the Linus came forward. They said, we did it. And they were executed. And they saved the rest of the population. So the Mars says, Pupus and Linus are Haruge Lud. They were murdered in Lud. But they, nobody, the other tzaddikim cannot stand the Michitzasim, can't stand in their boundary or in their place of Ganeidin. They're at a higher level. So Ruch Haim said, any soldier who's given up his life on behalf of the state of protecting the state of Israel, or the Jews in Israel, is is of that same order. They're in a place where they are a, 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 a level above all other tzaddikim. So it seems to me self-evident that if that's true for tzaddikim who gave up their lives, it's also true for tzaddikim, for soldiers who put their lives in danger because they were also prepared to be Moshe Nefesh. Baruch Hashem, they, they, they have survived the ordeal. And they should continue to survive. But the, 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 it's true both those who gave up their lives, that they're in a place in Gan Eden where other tzaddikim can't stand, and Yibadu L'chaim, the tzaddikim, the, the soldiers that are fighting now, they have reserved for them a place in Gan Eden after 120 years, which is a place where other tzaddikim will not be able to, to enter. And I want to talk, and, and Sir Rav Chaim said that we have to daven for the soldiers. The soldiers are, are protecting us. If not for the soldiers, Israel would be invaded, everybody would be, we'd be wiped out. And so we, therefore we have to have tremendous admiration for, for, the, for the soldiers, both the soldiers who lost their lives and the soldiers, Ibad Chaim, who are protect, who continue to protect Kai. So we have to have tremendous admiration and we have to have tremendous appreciation and we have to daven for the soldiers that they should be protected by the, the, uh, the Ribbon Shalom. And it's not, they're not only protecting the Jew, the, the, the Jewish population in Israel. They're protecting the Jews worldwide. Because, you know, until October 7th, we thought that we were re- relatively secure, especially here in America. We thought that anti-Semitism was, was, was in just a very small percentage of population. We saw after October 7th, it was unbelievable what we witnessed. People coming out of the woodwork supporting Hamas and, and demonstrating on their behalf. These are, these are the worst, the worst brutality of criminals, murderers, atrocious crimes. Why in the world are people supporting them? Why, why, why are the, this this nonsense about that you have to know the context and all that? It's all pure anti-Semitism. It, it, it was under the surface until now. Now it's emerged on the college campuses and other places. So if not for the state of Israel, we would all be, even with the state of Israel, we're all in but the level of Sakana would be even greater. So the soldiers that are fighting for the security of the state of Israel and the, and the citizens of Israel, they're fighting for, for world jewelry, for all of us around the world. And therefore, we all have to have the same sense of appreciation and Akar Satov. And I would like to tie this in to this week's Parsha. The Chumash speaks about the vessels in the Mishkan. The, the holiest vessel was the Aron the Ark, where the Luchos were placed. There were the two tablets, the first set of tablets, and then Moshe broke those tablets when they were worshipping the Eagles of, and the second house. Both sets of tablets were in the Aron. The Umar says, Luchos Luchos Vishivei Luchos Menachem Ba'aron. The broken tablets and the, and the whole tablets were in the Aron. The, the tablets were, the, the Aron was in the Kachik Kadashim appropriately. In the Holy of Holies, that was the holiest place. Nobody was allowed to enter the Holy of Holies except for Aaron once a year on, on Yom Kippur. So that's where the Aaron was together with the, with, the, with the Luchos. That was the holiest place in the mission. Now the Torah says that the, the Aaron had on top of the Aaron, there were two Kruvim, there were these two cherubs that were chiseled out of the gold. Of, there was a golden cover on the Aaron that was called the, the Kaporas. And out of the, and it, it wasn't attached, it was part of the Kaporas were these two angels 
the two Kruvim. And the Gemara says, Rashi quotes that he had the image of Tinochus, of, of children, young children or, or infants. So the Chumis says that the Kruvim are parsech and afem lamao. They spread their wings upwards. Sochachim bechan feim al kaparas. They hover and they, 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 they protect the, the, uh, or they secure the kaparas, the cover to the, uh, to the Aaron. Ufneim ishalachim. And their faces are towards each other. So now I, I want to ask you a question. Where would you say the Kedusha is greater? Is it the greater, is it the Keruvim? Or is it greater the Aaron? Because the Aaron contained within it the, the Luchos. Is it, is, was it the Luchos that the greater Kedusha or the Keruvim? I would say it's a no-brainer. Of course, it's the Luchos. This was God's handy where God gave the Luchos to Moshe Rabbeinu. He wrote it with his own hand or he gave it with his own, he gave it to him directly. So obviously the, the Luchos, you would say, are greater Kedushim. But it's not true. It's not the case. And I'll, I'll show you how I know in a minute. And also, I would ask you, what, why, what, why, why did the, the, the Aaron need Kruven? What for? What was the purpose of having Kruven? The, there was so much Kedusha in the Aaron. What did they need Kruven for? So I would say, but if you look at the end of the parsha, it says, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, when I appear to you, I'll speak to you from the Kaparas, from the top of the Aaron. Where will God address Moshe Rabbeinu from? From on top of, the, not from the inside the Aaron, but from on top of the Aaron, between the two Kruvim, between the wings of the Kruvim that are hovering and protecting the, 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 the cover of the, of the, of the Aaron. That, that's where God will appear from the Kruvim. So I would ask you, why would God appear from the Kruvim? Why not appear from the Luchos? That's Kabbalah, it's the Torah, it's the mitzvahs and everything. That's God gave the Torah to the Jewish people with the Luchos. That's God's handiwork. Isn't that a more appropriate place for God to be? Why does he appear in Kruvim? So you see, the Kruvim is a higher level of Kedusha. And that's why God appeared from the Kruvim. So what makes the Kruvim a higher level of Kedusha? So I would say, first of all, why did the Kruvim have images of young children? Why, they, they were angels. Why did they have to look like young children? So the answer is because it teaches that don't think that angels have the highest level of Kedusha. People are a higher level of Kedusha. And why? Because angels are static. Angels are stagnant. They can't accomplish anything. They just, they're, they're, they're spiritual entities, but they don't have Bechira, they don't have free will, and they're not able to grow. Human beings could grow, and, and, and the growth is unlimited because a human being is, 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 is emanates from a Kaddish Baruch Hu. It's Chelka it Kami Mao. It was it, it embedded a part of a Kaddish Baruch Hu in the human being. And therefore, the, the Kedusha of a human being exceeds that of the Kruvim. And the Kruvim, uh, uh, I'm sorry, of Malachim. So these Kruvim, we had the face, the images of, of children. Why? Because if you look at a person, you think, ah, no, nothing special. Or sometimes people do things wrong. So he, he's, he's not a tzaddik, this guy, or this person, this woman. Or you see their midas are not appropriate. So you're critical. So the, the Torah tells you the Kruvim had the images of infants because an infant is pure. It's untainted. When a, when a child is born, the neshama comes out in total purity, un, un, untainted by the, the, the person's activities later in life. And it shows, the Kruvim demonstrates the enormous potential of the human being. And when we look at people, we shouldn't look at them with their flaws and their faults. We should look at every child has, has, a, has, has an infant in them. And it's still there. It never disappears. It never gets destroyed. It becomes tarnished. So you take a, a, a like silver, you have to polish it. But it's still there. And, the, and therefore the Kruvim are a higher level of Kedusha. So the Kruvim go on top of the Aran, on top of the Kaporis, which is, contains the Luchos. And from where does the, 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 the and, and the Kruvim are protecting the, the, the Aram. Why does the Aran need to be protected? Because Torah could easily be destroyed. Torah could be perverted. Torah could be corrupted. So it's, it's man that has the job and has the task of protecting the Torah. And the Torah also represents Klal Yisrael because every, the, the Torah has 600,000 letters and the, and the six, with 600,000 Jews went out of Mitzrayim, the male adults. And therefore the, the Torah represents also Klal Yisrael. 
So the, the, the Luluchos needed protection. So who protected them? It was these two Kruvim. So what was the strength of these two Kruvim? It was number one, Parsim Kinefei Lamala. Their wings were, 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 were pointed upwards, lifted upwards, because they, 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 the, the Kruvim represent the fact that a Jew aspires for Kedusha. The Jew aspires and pines to become, to be Dabak in the Rebbein Shalom. A Jew lives with, with Nemuna and Bitachab. That's one element of the greatness of the Jew. And the other element of the greatness of the Jew is Peneim Ish El Achiv. That they're, that they're looking at each other. Their faces are turned to each other. That's the Achtos, the unity that permeates when, when the Jews are, are, are united. The remaining of the says that's why the Luchas were a miksha. They were chiseled out of the cover of the Aran. It wasn't a separate piece of gold that was molded on. It was all united because it was because of the Achtos of Klai Yisrael. So, Torah is built on two things. It's built on Ben Adam Chavero, Ben Adam Amakam. How we relate to God and how we relate to man. They're both connected. They're both intertwined. If you, if, if you observe the Torah with one and without the other, it's not Torah. Torah is a, a relationship with God and a relationship with fellow man. And that's because a man is also a, an element of, of, of uh, comes from the Rebbe Shalom. And therefore, man has tremendous chashivas and, and, and importance and value. So the Kruvim synthesize together these two elements. On the one hand, Parsim Kenafeim Lamala, pointed towards the Shemayim, towards the Rebbein Hashem, and at the same time, Pneim Yishalachim, they're looking at each other, at, 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 the, at, the, at the human beings who are rooted in this earth, and, 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 and who are Basar Adam, flesh and blood. And that, those two elements together, that's uh, they were able to be Parsim Kenafeim Al, Sochim Bechanfeim Al Aron. They, they, they protected the Aron, the cover of the Aron, because of these two elements of the Kruvim. So I, I would say, and that's why the Rebbein Shalom spoke to Moshe from the Kruvim, because that was a much higher level of Kedusha. That represents the human, human potential and, and the connection that human beings have to the Malachim so Kunst that they have in Muna. But the human being who lives in the world of Hester and still he has a Muna. So that's a higher level of Kedusha. And, and, and he's unified with, 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 with his fellow man. So I would, that's why God appeared, so I would say that the modern day Kruvim are the soldiers in the IDF, and that's not an exaggeration. These are Kruvim, because these are, these Malachim, these soldiers, whether the ones that, 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 that were conscripted or the ones that volunteered and they didn't have to be in the army. These are the modern day Kruvim. They're protecting Klal Yisrael. They're, their wings are spread over the, the luchos, over the tablets, over the, over the, over the, all of Klal Yisrael. They're the ones that are, perfor, perf, they're, they're providing protection. And it, and it comes from these two elements because on the one hand, the, the Amuna today is, is unbelievable. It, there's a, there's a tremendous revival. But people are becoming Bali Chuva, people, e, 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 even if they're not full Bali Chuva, but there's, there's stirrings, religious stirrings. You see, the purity, the, 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 the face of the Tinok in, in, in the, in every human being. You see that in the, in, in the soldiers. You see them dancing with yarmulkes, without yarmulkes, dancing together, singing the, singing Jewish songs, say, reciting Tehillim together, putting on Tehillim, putting on, wearing tzitzis for the first time. And, and, and together, the, those, those that are committed, and those that are not committed, they're all united, the war effort. It's all, all of Eretz Yisrael, all, the entire population is united together. So the, the soldiers of the IDF, these are the Kruvim. These are the ones that are protecting the Jews, the Jewish people in Eretz Yisrael. And these are the ones that are protecting Klal Yisrael. And there's a, and, and they're, and they're at a Madrega, that's higher than the regular tzaddik is able to achieve, like the Gemara says. And then there are, there's another group of Kruvim. There's another battalion of soldiers that are also protecting us. And that is the battalion that have lost their lives. They, these are the Kruvim that are in Gan Eden. And the Gemara says, Rashi quotes the Gemara in, in Parshish Bishalch, that there's a base of Migdash Lamata and there's a base of Migdash Lamala. There's a base of Migdash in this world and there's a base of Migdash in the heavens. The base of Migdash in this world was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. But the base of Migdash Lamala is still standing. It's still there. 
and it's waiting for it to be reunited with the base of Midrash, which will be rebuilt when Mashiach will return. But who's serving in the base of Midrash, Lamala? Who's on top of the Aron? Who are the Kruvim that are on top of the Aron in the base of Midrash that's Lamala? This is the battalion of soldiers from the, from the Tzvog and Aliyah that were Moser and Nefesh, and they lost their lives. In, in, in fighting to protect Klai Yisrael. They are at the highest level of Kedusha. They are at a place of Ganeidin where nobody else is, a, is allowed to enter. And they are the holy, holy Kruvim that are Sochachim B'chanfeim. Their wings are spread and they're, and, and it, they're Sochachim B'chanfeim. Allah Kaparas. They're protecting that which is below. That is, in this, in, in the world below, they are providing that protection. So it's both Battalions. It's the battalions of of the Kruvim in the Shemayim that that have lost their lives, that have perished. Tremendous tzaddikim, and it's the Kruvim that that are on the line now that are fighting with Mesiris Nefesh, and many have been there for over four months. That's unbelievable. The conditions there that they're enduring, and the the, the fear and the trepidation of the, of themselves and their family, and the, and the trauma that the entire Jewish nation is, is experiencing. And and it's and it's not only the soldiers; it's the whole the whole Jewish community and the, all, all the citizens of Israel together are united in 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 parsing kanafem lamala and and stretching out their wings to the Kaddish Baruch Hu. And penei mishalach, there's there's achdus that's prevailing throughout Jewish throughout Israeli society in ways that it never was before. And and we have to daven for the kruvim, the tzaddikim, the ones that are protecting us. And I, I would add, if you, if you, I think it's proper too, that it's also the Israeli government, those that are leading the war effort, they're also tzaddikim, because it's so, it's enormously difficult, and there's so much fighting going on, and so many, much infighting. But they are the ones that are protecting Klaal Yisrael, and we have to dominate every half. And Amir Tzashem, we should see Yeshuos, Vinachamos, and the Rebbe Shem bring the war to an end, and, and the hostages should be freed, and the Vishishol Amal Yisrael. Thank you for listening, and have a good Shabbos.